Hello, everyone. Welcome to the, the webinar. It's uh, titled Critical KPIs to Measure Your School's Digital Marketing Success, presented by HEM. And if you're not already familiar with HEM, well, we provide all aspects of digital marketing services, focusing only on schools. And that can be universities, colleges, language schools, boarding schools, K-12, and everything in between in many languages around the world. So uh, we cover a lot of ground there. And my name's Archie Pollock. I'm the regional manager for HEM in the UK and Europe. And I'm joined with my colleague, uh, Scott, today, who's the regional manager for North America, uh, who's in more or less your time zone. Hello, Scott. Hello, Archie. And, and we'll both be presenting today. Uh, we're going to have the microphones on mute just so we can progress through. Uh, if you have any questions, though, feel free to pop them into the GoToWebinar menu bar at the side of the screen. Just click on questions and then you can you can type in your question there at any point, but we'll come round to the questions towards the end of the webinar today. Uh, just an, a further note, everyone who registered for the webinar, even if they weren't able to attend, will receive a recording of this presentation as well as the slide deck, uh, and that should arrive in the next couple of working days, just so you know. Uh, do you want to kick us off, Scott, just with a kind of uh, to start off there? Sure thing. Let's let's walk through right an overview of what we'll be covering today. First, we'll talk about digital marketing, um, kind of the foundational elements and how they apply to our KPIs, some of those core KPIs. And really, what we're going to do from that point on is go step by step through the journey of a prospective student from initial inquiry or awareness of your school to their beginning of consideration of your school versus others to their decision making stage to their enrollment stage the point at which they begin uh, your kpis will vary from each of these stages and uh, that it's really just going to be the format of what we'll walk through today with you and you may be wondering hang on a second what is what is a kpi Let's maybe dial it back just for a moment. Um, I'm sure most of you are very familiar with the term, but just to clarify, a KPI, a key performance indicator, it's a quantifiable measure of your progress towards a goal. So for that to happen, it must be measurable and trackable, usually through some form of analytics, most commonly Google Analytics or the analytics that are available through certain platforms. We'll talk about that in a moment. It should be comparable. So in order to gauge performance over time you have to be able to look at your own channels perhaps even the performance of some of your competitors so you want to be able to gauge this over time and thus it must be comparable data and it should also be improvable so is it something that you can actually see success in over time whilst working towards a goal so just to clear that up we just wanted to talk about what a kpi was exactly and it and it helps us understand we're going to apply those kpis to each of the tools we use in digital marketing to help attract new students. So in social media, what are the KPIs we're looking for across those many stages? Through email when we're using that, or blogging, or boosting, or doing advertising for that matter, uh, and in referrals and reviews. Uh, they, each of them have specific KPIs as we're looking to draw people into our website and eventually into our school. And on our website, there's a whole nother world of KPIs called call to actions. Uh, and in those calls to action on your homepage, on your program pages, these are the places where you have buttons that say, click here to contact us, click here to fill out a form, click here to download a PDF. And every time you're gathering contact information to try to reach out with them. So to continue the conversation, and engage with those prospective folks. So that's where we're going to be applying those KPIs. And for each social media channel, for each digital platform, there tends to be tools to help you measure data. And all the data that you're about to see in this session can be viewed through the platforms which are on your screen. So most of which you'll be familiar with, maybe some more than others, but we'll refer to these platforms individually as we move through the webinar today. So if we're talking about this journey, the student journey, if you like, we can talk about four main stages. And the first stage is the awareness stage. So we're going to break this into the, the, the buying journey into these stages, starting with the awareness stage. And how do we define this stage? 
really the awareness stage is when someone has realized that they have a goal that they want to achieve and that in order to achieve that goal they require a form of education uh, and it's about being visible to those people at that moment in time when they've had that realization when they become aware that they require what you potentially offer so how do we understand being visible to people at that time and, and also how do we improve it well understanding and improving visibility is an interesting topic and there's a few options that are available and you don't have to use them all but some of them on the screen you'll you'll know you've got for example um, advertising using social media ads or google ads there's also Google My Business, which we'll talk about in just a moment in more detail. And there's also keyword integration, so by which, by which I mean having content on your website which is relevant to the kinds of keywords that people will use when they're searching for services like yours at that awareness stage. Having those targeted, integrated keywords will make you more visible to those people. And your visibility thus can exist across multiple platforms and these platforms all offer different forms of visibility so we're all familiar with the, the brands you see in front of you but were you aware that there's different types of visibility um, what's relevant in terms of visibility on one might be less relevant on another so for example on screen here we have uh, the number of followers for Facebook uh, you also have the impressions and reach that you have for Facebook ads and again it's just very similar channels the same brand but very different forms of um, KPI and they change depending on the different stages in this journey so for the awareness stage we might be looking at impressions or reach we might be looking at reach and followers we might be looking at search positioning uh, on Google search these are all factors that we'd like to take into consideration today and as we get into that consideration, we first want to ask you, how many of these platforms do you regularly monitor uh, with data? And we listed a few here, so Facebook Insights of your day-to-day -day posts, Facebook Ads of your advertising, Google Analytics, Search, and Google Ads. So you have the opportunity to tell us if you're uh, monitoring regularly all of them or most of them, or not so much, maybe two or fewer. So please click to vote. And we see the votes are coming in. Thank you for your participation. This is anonymous, so we're not gonna show who voted what, so please be honest. And now I'm gonna, looks like all the votes are in. So I'm gonna go ahead and share the results. Hmm. And we're glad you were honest. We appreciate that. And it again, it's, you know, the, 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 this is a lot to do with, you know, how many people people have in the marketing team, you know, how many of these avenues can they be visible on? How many of these platforms can they be visible on? How much time is there in the day amongst the team to work on all of these different factors? So, um, yeah, it's always interesting. Yeah. Absolutely. And it we, we like these because it provides you the opportunity to see how you stand uh, among your peers. Um, uh, this is just a little sampling, right? This isn't scientific, but it's always good to know. So let's talk first about Google My Business, and that's going to be the listing of your school uh, in a Google search in that far right column where you have the opportunity to have a bit of a profile, a map, some photos, your contact information, your open closed hours. This is especially useful for those schools who are really working to attract students nearby, right? Students in your city or certainly in your region, in your area, because this is going to be more uh, useful for them in terms of the mapping and in terms of things like website or especially click to call. This is a, this is a really useful tool for you to a, be visible at the awareness stage just in search alone and give them an immediate option to press the button and call. Uh, of course, you want to make sure you keep your info updated and accurate, including your events. And also, it's a great way to list your social channels so they can, you know, look in uh, a little more in depth about who you are and what you offer. So some of the KPIs you're able to see within Google My Business, well, first of all, it's to track how many people clicked those calls to action, uh, visiting your website, 
requesting directions, or how many folks placed a call to the school just through Google My Business alone. And that's a great, uh, a very useful metric to understand at the awareness stage to see how that's working for you. As we said, it also offers photos. So you'll wanna make a point of, of course, updating your photos, not just with the buildings, but with faces, with people. So they see, you know, what's it like to be a student here? What's the teaching experience like? And you can also measure uh, metrics in Google My Business to see how you measured in terms of the number of times your business photos have been viewed compared to other businesses like you. So that uh, that's a, great, a very useful one too. And then, yeah, yeah oh, sorry. Th sorry, yeah, I think the 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 other area we talked about was the the search console and, and visibility uh, online. So when we're talking about search console, another KPI at this awareness stage is the click through rate. Uh, and if you look at on the screen here between the yellow and the purple boxes, <clears throat> you can see what percentage of searchers click through to the website. So Click through or CTR means what percentage of people saw your website appear in results that actually clicked through to the website. So you can also see on the screen you have um, impressions, which is in yellow, uh, which is the number of times people have seen a URL connected to your school, excluding paid ads. And in this stage, we also want to measure the average position that your website appears in in organic searches for particular search terms, which is in purple. So you can see that in, the, in this case, it's the last 28 days. So if you're thinking, well, yeah, I understand the principle of this, but how do I improve it? Really, it's about content marketing. Generally speaking, it's about on-page SEO, also other SEO-related activities. If your organic positioning isn't great, what you really should focus on is trying to improve the uh, content that's already there, the page content, enrich it with relevant keywords. Um, and also create new content, maybe blogs uh, is, a, is a good idea, or again, refreshing what's already there with, a, with an eye on what kind of words are we using? Are these the kind of words that people might be searching for when looking for services such as ours? If you're still a bit confused, you know, we're always happy to have a chat about it and talk through these things with you. And if we're talking about Facebook ads, there's kind of similar data for the awareness level. And in this chart here on the screen in the yellow section, you can again, you can see the impressions, which is how many times your ad was seen, versus the reach, which is how many individuals actually saw the ad. So again, during this awareness stage, it's all about visibility. And these are the two KPIs that we particularly focus on uh, for the awareness stage in ads. And if we continue on that Facebook thread, um, there's also the area uh, through Facebook Insights where you can look at other KPIs. So, for example, the number of followers that you have might be a worthwhile KPI to track. Uh, obviously, people come and go, people follow and unfollow, but your net number of followers over time is certainly something that you might want to pay attention to. Obviously, generally speaking, the more followers, the better, the more that you can attract and maintain highlights, you know, a sense of community and engagement amongst those people who do follow you. Um, and again, this boils down similarly like it does to content. It's about being relevant and providing useful content, which shows that you understand the prospective students' concerns and motivations that you're speaking their language. Uh, and ultimately, they, that they stick around and hopefully engage with your social content, maybe share some posts or like or comment. Uh, and again, that just builds up that sense of community, which reflects well on your organization. And when it comes to a next step in terms of tracking, we can look to Google Analytics to understand traffic from channels like your social channels. So on screen here, we've got an example where we're looking at 2022, the month of February, compared to 2021. And that's just on the top left. And then as we move to the right hand side, you can see how that's broken down per channel. So you've got organic search, you've got direct traffic, and you've got social traffic. So in this particular example, you can see the social traffic has gone from 22 last year up to 135 in terms of the number of users. So it's up by 513%, which is fantastic. So clearly some kind of effort has been made in this example school to, to 
boost this kind of traffic coming through. But interestingly, also in the yellow box, thinking more of the awareness stage, you can see the number of new users who have come to your site for the first time or the first time in a while. And you can see how that's impacted as well. Again, 520% uh, increase in new users, which is something you might want to focus on more for the awareness stage. So that's really interesting for this particular example school who may have been working hard on their social media. They can use this as a kind of um, as an example of how powerful it can be when done correctly. Yeah, and, and I like this one too because it takes social media, it kind of crosses, it brings two channels together, social media and your website. So you're able to see what what your efforts on social did in bringing traffic to the website. This is a fun one. That's absolutely. And also another point about that, why do we compare year-on-year -year traffic primarily? Because of the seasonality of the industry of education, we all have particular enrollment periods, whether, you know, it doesn't really matter what school type you are, but there are different times of the year which typically you'll get more traffic than others. So comparing January to July may give you very different results, but comparing July to July will be more uh, more valid in terms of comparing the data. Exactly. Uh, and, and sticking along the analytical theme, um, we can also talk about engagement with that traffic. So this example on the screen here, we're looking at the landing page. So that's the page that the person first landed on, which is represented uh, by the forward slash, which is the home page. Again, we're looking at 2022 compared to 2021, the month of February, and we can see the number of sessions, we can see the number of new sessions, and the number of new users. So this, again, tells us one thing, but taking it one step further, we can also see things like pages per session or the average session duration, where this tells us more about engagement. You know, what are people, how many people are coming to our site? And what are they doing? How long are they staying in the site? How many pages are they visiting? Generally speaking, the longer someone's on the web page and the more pages they visit, the more engaged and interested they are. So it's uh, it's very interesting stuff. So we have a lot of uh, a lot of metrics to share with you there in awareness. And as we get into consideration, uh, some fewer metrics, but different ones, because at the consideration stage, this is when a prospect has firmed up their interest, so they begin to do their research. They, they know of you now, and they want to compare you against uh, others. Your competitors are the ones they're choosing. Uh, so your goal at this point is to get them not just to appear in your website, but to engage, to convert, as you will. And we use the term convert. Conversion is used uh, sometimes ubiquitously, but what we're going to define it as here is someone who has filled out a form with name and some kind of contact information and clicked submit. So provided to you their contact information so that you can begin a, a two-way conversation. So let's talk about that. That's done through a calls to action typically on your website. Those are the buttons that say download or click here to apply or click here to learn more or set up a tour. Uh, we can do it through forms across your website. And uh, we're also kind of considering the user experience. What's it like? Do we throw too many uh, of those calls to action at them at one time on one page? We want to think through that. In email marketing, we're going to send out emails with links to draw them back into your website or to fill out a form, for example. So uh, we'll measure that as well. Of course, in social media and content marketing, we're going to be writing content for them to use in consideration. So we're going to talk about engagement there. And then we'll also talk about how we're going to measure this within your paid ads. And just like before, kind of the same list of platforms, but different metrics within each. So in Google Analytics, we're looking at user retention. Uh, we're looking at goal conversion rates in Google Analytics. When it comes to ads on Google or Facebook, we're looking for the cost per conversion or cost per result. So that is them taking the action that you asked of them on the ad, a click. Uh, when it comes to uh, sending out emails, for example, we're looking to see if they're filling out the forms or if they're uh, clicking through on our on our uh, offers to have them click. Are, are they clicking in to come back to our website? Same as the measure at Facebook, when we're simply posting on Facebook, what's the click-through rate? Uh, and if we're boosting any posts, what's the cost per click? 
So this gives you a visual of what we're talking about when I mentioned those calls to action, those that say our programs, apply online, uh, help and advice, fees explained. These are buttons that allow the user to engage, right? And uh, as we talked about the user experience, we want to make sure that these are in the right place at the right time, that they meet them and help kind of guide them through, okay, well, what's next? Okay, well, what's next? And what we're going to do, we're going to be able to measure the effectiveness of our placement here. In Google Analytics on the right, you'll see in your charts of Google Analytics to the far right of your charts, you'll see conversions. It's under the title of acquisition. And as I said, conversions are people who have converted or made happen the goals that we've set. So the goals are defined differently for every single web website. On this website, for example, we see five unique goals that have lit, uh, that were that are lit up here. So these five will each individually be identified as a goal, so that we can see, you know, not only how many users came in from organic search or email or social, but then beyond the quantity, we're able to go to the far right and measure the quality. You know, how many of them clicked on these goals and basically have identified the types of actions on our website that are indicative of someone who's truly authentically interested in becoming a student. So it's a, it's a great quality measure there. When it comes to sending your emails, you know, we all track how many were sent and how many have been opened. At the consideration stage, you also want to track how many people clicked on the links. Uh, the email is on the left in the mobile phone. The, uh, the e-newsletter is, and then it sends them, when they click, it sends them back to your website. So we want to track the clicks and click rate to see uh, how many people are engaging with those opportunities that we're putting before them. Same at social media posts. We're going to supply uh, hyperlinks on some posts when it comes to really getting to engage them to come to the website. In this case, we're talking about uh, you know current students reflecting on their time as a student. And so the idea is to click to have them read this blog post and then engage in terms of applying. So we get to see which uh, posts, which platforms drove the most traffic to your website in terms of all your efforts that were put out. But then you can also see in terms of conversions, Facebook was by far the most uh, valuable at providing folks to, to actually convert, fill out the form. So this helps us answer one of those really common questions of where do I need to spend all my, you know, which social media platforms do I need to spend all my time on? And rather than spend across all nine of them, this allows you to kind of narrow down, okay, it's more effective and efficient if I spend our efforts on the first two, the first four, for example. And then another insight in terms of just your regular posts on Facebook. Uh, above and beyond impressions. Uh, impressions are good at that awareness stage, as Archie said, but now that we're in the consideration stage, we're looking at link clicks, cost per click, and click-through rate. So that's going to be really a helpful one at this stage. So now let's turn to ads and if we're talking about uh, the types of ads that typically are lead generation or student recruitment ads that's traditionally going to be a search engine ad so a google ad that an ad comes up after someone searched for someone like you and that ad click sends them to a landing page where really the whole focus of the landing page is for them to fill out that form that's the whole idea of the lead generation campaign so if that's your objective then that's your metric, right? And below you see the number we're tracking is cost per conversions. Because we've spent money on this ad for the past month, in this case, it's a little about uh, $1,700. Uh, so what was the cost per conversion on that ad? Again, conversion meaning they filled out the form and they click submit. And of course, we're also measuring conversions there on the left, 84 conversions. So those are your key uh, metrics at the uh, consideration stage. I think that's a really interesting point, Scott. The, the cost per conversion is really a, a key KPI, I think, that we at HGM, you know, are really focused on when it comes to running advertising campaigns because essentially 
it kind of answers the question in some way that we get a lot when people say, you know, how much is it going to cost me to run my ads? You know, how much is it going to cost me to get new students? Uh, and although you can't really give a definitive figure on that, what you can do is you can look at these kind of KPIs and say, look, well, we run the ads for a few months. Let's see, it works out at twenty dollars per conversion. So that generally means that you've got for twenty dollars, you have the opportunity to, to to talk to someone or communicate or engage with someone who's seemingly quite interested in your courses or what you offer. Yeah. So, you know, is that worthwhile for you paying twenty dollars to have this conversation and, and and to set up a chat with someone? Um, that's the kind of question that we would ask back to the person who asked that question. And I think using right. landing pages is something which people are sometimes a bit reluctant to do because they feel it might be a little bit salesy or a little bit pushy. Um, mm -hmm. However, I would I would counter that by saying that when there is a, a, a strong landing page in place, um, it really helps people to take the next step. It guides them in the right direction uh, as to what you want and also to help them take that next step if they are genuinely interested. And you're offering them to download a, a brochure or prospectus or to sign up for a, a webinar or event you want to make it as easy as, as possible for them so that you get as many leads as possible and that cost per conversion comes down exactly and, and one tactic in here that we're seeing is that the ad is category specific to a specific course and so is the landing page uh, like you say it makes it easy for the user because the only content they're going to see on this landing page is relevant to the course they asked about and relevant to a new or prospective student. So they don't have to fish for the information they're looking for, it's right there. Uh, and the other point I wanna make, cause I thought of this as you were talking about cost per conversion or cost per lead, $20 is relative to the course and to your market, your marketplace, your audience. Uh, you may advertise a different type of course completely and get a completely different cost per conversion or cost per lead. Could be $75 or $120. Uh, it, it, it's different across engineering, nursing, uh, IT. So don't take that 20 as a as a measure or a goal. Um, it's going to be different everywhere you go. And it's, it's in the past year and a half, kind of all of them have taken a step up as being more uh, expensive. Yes, uh, well, why don't we go to the next poll, Scott, poll number two, uh, and the question is, how frequently do you monitor and optimize your ad campaigns? Is it daily, weekly, monthly, or we don't really have the time to do that? We appreciate and your again, responses. Yeah, it's anonymous, so if you're the one who says we don't have the time, we get it. That's totally cool, and we're not going to call you out. And also, I see there's a there's a question or two has come in. Um, so, if again, just okay. a reminder, if you have any questions about what we've just discussed or or any other elements we've covered so far, uh, don't be shy. Put it in the into the um, into the question section, and we will address it towards the end. All right. Thank you for voting. I'm going to share the results here, and a majority of us are pretty much in the middle. Yeah with a few of us who don't have time and a few of us who, who check it a lot. You know, uh, we, we kind of offer the option of, or, or the, um, the insight of saying once a day might be, you know, feel free to pull back and spend your time doing other things because daily checks on data and metrics uh, can, can be more time consuming than they can be helpful. So, you know, once yeah, a I mean, week I guess or once that, a month. Apart from maybe the first few days or first few weeks, maybe when, you're getting feedback from the ad campaign as to what, you know, if you're doing some keyword bidding, for example, on, on Google, then, you know, what's working, what's not working, how do I assign my resources? You want to get that uh, initial information. And, uh, but thereafter, like you say, Scott, you know, that it's perhaps not necessary to, to focus every day, but, you know, each yeah. to the role. Um, right. So let's, let's move on to the third stage, which is the decision stage. How do we define that? Well, at this point, really, the prospective student has obviously come across the school. They've had a look around. They understand what you offer. They've probably compared you to some of your competitors, and they're now looking to make a decision whether to come and study with you or not. So at this point, really, the focus is on engaging with them, uh, speaking to them directly if possible, answering any questions or final, final queries that they have, and hopefully just helping to nudge them over into that kind of application mode in their minds. And 
you can see here KPIs for the decision stage, it's quite kind of follow up or CRM heavy. Uh, obviously, a CRM being a tool where you can track and measure these kinds of efforts um, is a really important vehicle for that. Um, things like tracking phone call data, are you able to call how many phone calls you made or um, recall how many phone calls you made? How many of them connected or were engaged or you left a voicemail? Similarly for email or SMS or WhatsApps even, um, all of this kind of tracking in theory should, should be taking place if it's possible. You may have a, a very robust CRM, you may have one that's you know, missing a few of these features or you may be working with no CRM at all and you might have to do a few things manually. But if you can, it makes sense to uh, to track some of these things or, or all of them if you can. And if you don't have a CRM and you, and you don't see that coming in the near future, perhaps ask you yourself or your team to track some of these elements manually for a period of time. Just to give yourself an idea of roughly where you are and how many calls you have to make to make connections, for example, um, might be helpful in, in understanding the efficacy of all your different efforts. Uh, and yeah, not, not all CRMs will track all of these activities, but it is worth having a think about them and assessing them if you can to, to understand how, how things are going. And if we take a step uh, further into this call success rate, um, showing the outcomes of the call, like I said, whether it's a connection or a voicemail or, or whatnot, understanding that kind of data helps you to know when is really the best time to reach people. Is it morning, afternoon, evening? Uh, also, it helps you to qualify leads. So let's say you're getting leads from an advertising campaign and you try to call the number and it's a fake number. Well, clearly that's maybe not the, the strongest of leads. Um, or equally, you might call someone and connect with them. And after just a few questions, you realize, I don't think this person's going to be a suitable candidate for our school for reason X, Y, or Z. And um, you can therefore qualify and, and decide whether to pass it on to the admissions team or not depending on how you're set up. So understanding this kind of data can be very helpful in making your systems and, and, um, more efficient. And taking it a step further than that, we're talking about communication points. So phone call might be one, email might be another, SMS could be a further one. Uh, there are many different ways that you can, of course, communicate with prospective students. Um, and sometimes, I don't know about you, Scott, but sometimes I'll speak to schools and I'll ask them about their follow-up procedure and they'll say, I'll say, you know, a lead comes in, what happens next? And they'll say, we send an email. I say, okay. And then what? And sometimes there's no, there's no then what. Right, and there's then, no then what, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So sometimes it's just a, a, an email that goes out. Sometimes they're on the phone immediately. It, you know, it, it, it varies massively. But we find over time, having worked you know, across the education spectrum for many years, that it can often take between 12 and 20 contact points to get somebody to apply. Now that's not to say it's the same in every case, but 12 to 20 I would say is a pretty fair um, range to, to or median to, to go with. Um, just shows you that there's a lot of effort that has to be put in to convert leads to the, to the maximum possibility that you can. Yeah. And again, going further down that funnel towards the the actual application procedure itself. So if you have an online application, for example, and you can see when somebody begins an application and doesn't finish it, well, if that number of incomplete applications is high, that's you know a red flag. That's an area that really demands immediate um, review. Is there a problem with the application procedure? Is it is it broken? Is it technically not working? Are there questions in there that are very difficult or, or problematic for students to answer? Uh, are they stuck somewhere? And this is what I said about you know trying to engage or, or speak to someone directly because if you see that a lot of people are starting the application process and not finishing it, call them. You know, ask them: Is is there a problem? Is there something I can help with? Maybe it's something that can be uh, solved fairly readily just with, with a short couple of minutes on the phone. So keeping track of these kind of KPIs as well. You know, they're further down the funnel, but they can be extremely valuable because once somebody's got all the way to the application phase, you know, you really don't want to lose them at that point unnecessarily. So it makes sense to track this kind of data. Exactly. And and while you can take most of these or all of these actions without a CRM, you could use a free version of Zoho or MailChimp or other systems. It's really within a paid 
subscription to a CRM that you're able to use the reporting to look at the data that Archie just walked through. So sometimes this is a good case to say, hmm, we don't have one, but maybe, but if we did, we could look at the KPIs at this stage really closely and get more efficient with, like we're saying, from incomplete to complete applications. Okay, we're on four out of four. Very exciting, home, eh? The home straight. <laughs> so at the enrollment stage, of course, they're they're either enrolled and in, or maybe they have one smaller little step uh, to to truly start class. It depends. So we're reaching those at the at the home stretch, uh, or maybe they're your current students. And in this case, again, we're going to create content that speaks to them, that gives them information. Um, that's relevant at their stage. Uh, in some cases, a good idea is a pre-arrival email, like you're you're going to be here next week or you're going to be here next month. Here are the things to plan for. You really want to work to stay engaged with them, even on social media. And then after their time with you, you want to encourage them to review you. Uh, overall, we're going to check kind of a bigger data a chart on results. So let's take a look at those last metrics. Again, same channels, different metrics. In this case, we're looking at return visitors and we're going to look at them by page. So not just at the home page or the program page, but you may have pages that are much more uh, focused with information for a starting student, a current student. So let's go to those pages and check the data. Uh, we want to look at number of reviews across both Google, Google My Business, Facebook, whatever channels are relevant to you and where where people leave reviews most uh, around your area, consider those places where you want to be active in understanding your metrics and, and getting your reviews. And then, like I said, we're going to do kind of an all-channel review, uh, a roll-up, if you will, to try to determine uh, return on investment. So we begin with uh, Google Analytics, tracking those return visitors on a specific page. And again, tracking them, uh, in this case, we're looking at uh, month of January versus the prior month, month of December, or at a, you know two weeks within the month. And we're tracking the number of users and in this case, returning visitors. And that's, that's really kind of the key metric you wanna be able to peel down for at this stage in, analytics and when you send out those emails for example like we talked about pre-arrival email we're, we're getting excited to see you soon the read rate here should be at least twice of the read rate that you typically get from a marketing email you know a marketing email may achieve 25 to 35 percent people reading opening your email but in in this stage of enrollment you'd want that to be at least double because they're more much more likely to be um, opening this. So that, that's the goal you're searching for at that metric. And I can't stress how valuable reviews are. Uh, and you want to track them on Facebook, on Google, again, wherever they're measured most for you. And in this case, you know, we, we often hear of, of people who say, well, we got a bad review in there or our number's not as high as we want it to be. You can change that metric by encouraging reviews and you can do that by inviting your your followers your students to review you via email or just tuck it within as a mention in a newsletter it doesn't have to be the top the entire topic of the email and also if you have the opportunity and if it fits with your school have your instructors mentioned this in the last week of class you know i've invo i've enjoyed being your instructor for the past term I hope you have too. Listen, we totally invite you to review the school, review this course uh, in uh, Google, Facebook, Yelp, wherever. Um, so without that invitation, they may not think of it, but with that invitation, they're more likely to say, yeah, let's let's do it. And, th and those invitations dr always drive up your stars. They never tend to drive them down. So here's that uh, that last chart we're going to walk through from left to right. This one kind of takes all the metrics we've looked at and thought about, puts them in one place. So first of all, you notice that on the far left, we have divided the channels up. And we have the paid channels across the top, and then the organic channels in the middle there with organic search, email marketing, social media. It didn't cost us anything, but it took some of our time. 
And the first metric we're tracking, and this is through a CRM we're able to track this, is the percentage of people who came in as a lead from each of those channels, the percentage of those who became an applicant, who filled out an applicant, application, sorry. And then we're just going to take it over a couple of bars to, okay, of those applications, how many, what percent total became a student? So you're, you're able to see the percentage and, and which tactic, which platform drove the most students. In this case, email. Uh, sorry, I mean social media. <laughs> social media on the brain. Um, and then we bring that down to, based on the amount of money we invested in each of these uh, tactics. And as we said, in inbound efforts, a lot of that time is, it's more uh, met, uh, the actions of people who work with you, the time of people on your team. So there wasn't a financial uh, give there, but there was a give of a whole lot of time. So you need to weigh that as well so that you can determine, you know, which one was most, uh, well, de delivered a better return on, in, on your investment, whatever it may be. In. And so we wrap up Great. with one final poll. So how satisfied are you with the ROI, return on investment, of your school's digital marketing strategy? Is it very satisfied, somewhat satisfied, not satisfied, or I don't really know the ROI of my digital efforts, truthfully? So, again, totally anonymous. Yeah, and hopefully, hopefully today's Why? webinar has given some insight as to understanding uh, in some more detail some of the things that you might consider regarding KPIs for ROI. Right. Okay, we got our votes in, and it's you know it's different with every webinar. We we have a variety of people come in, some of whom are are already really working KPIs, others who are just getting started in it. Looks like a lot of you are just getting started, which is great. Absolutely, and if there's anything you know that's not clear, or anything that you feel you're struggling with in terms of understanding some of these areas, you know, feel free to reach out to us. Um, I guess we'll get the, the contact details up in a moment. Um, and you know, we're more than happy to talk about things. We love talking about data, we love talking about analytics, uh, and obviously we work in the education sector, so we'll no doubt understand some of your pain uh, and happy to talk about it. Yes, we've been there. Um, just a quick note, our next webinar will be April 21st on the topic of social media through the enrollment journey. So we hope to see you there. I think we'll find, we'll, we'll, that's always a great topic. Um, and just as Archie was mentioning, uh, feel free to uh, reach out to us if you're interested to have a, 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 a brief conversation on KPIs, or if you'd like a full-on digital marketing assessment. There's no cost, there's no obligation. We'll look at your data and have a conversation about it, see what we think is, uh, is showing well, and what data shows opportunities for improvement, for optimization. Happy to do it. Uh, and you can reach out to me or to my colleague, Lara, uh, and we together or individually be happy to have these conversations with you. So Lara's out on the west uh, of, the, of North America, and I'm in the east of North America. So based on where you are, reach out to one of us or the other, and uh, we'd, we'd love to chat with you for sure. Should we take some questions, Scott? Question time. Question time. So there's a few in here. Uh, Okay, the first one that came up, oh, it came up a little while ago, so thanks for that. Um, how can we see the impact, for example, um, how many enrollments resulted from a particular ad campaign, not just the click-through rate, or I guess, you know, we talked about this, I think this was sent when we're talking about the awareness stage. So how do we track the success in terms of enrollments through our, through our ads? I think it's a very interesting question. And I guess, you know, the answer is there's no real one particular KPI, I think it's a combination. Um, and if we look a bit further than the awareness when we talked about reach and impressions, that's that's kind of outside of this. I think it's more about understanding when people inquire and become a lead, uh, usually through your ad form or through a, a landing page. That's when that I guess that journey begins. So you can start to track that individual as best as you can to see whether or not they eventually become a student. And the, probably the best way to do that is more leaning towards the CRM heavy side of things that we talked about in those exactly. slides. Exactly. 
Yeah. Yep. Seeing if they engage with your emails, see if you can reach them over the phone, and then eventually, when they become hopefully a paying student, you are able to track that uh, that they came originally from an advertisement. And most CRMs will allow for that if you have it in place. If not, then you'll have to take a note if you're running ads that. X person with X email address, usually email address is useful as a unique identifier that um, you can you can track that person on their journey more manually through, I don't know, Google Sheets or you know whatever you have to hand. Um, but it, truth be told, it is a combination of different elements. Have you got anything to add to that, Scott? Yeah, it's just the specific step you want to make sure you're taking when you integrate your ad form to the CRM. So if they click on your ad, they go to some type of form, fill out, name and contact info and then click submit and the integration that sends the info from that form into the crm set it up in the crm so that it flags it as coming from a google ad or from a facebook ad or from the third or a fourth source because once they're identified that's identified as their source in the crm then as you update their stage uh, new inquiry contacted set up a tour enrolled applied in um, or applied enrolled you're able to go, then go back to those who went to applied enrolled and see oh what was their original source and it's it's a data point already in your system so that's that's the way that you can take it beyond just the click-through rate for sure well we want to be conscious of people's time where um, we usually take about 45 minutes so with that in mind if there are any other questions that you have burning questions feel free to reach out to, to scott lara and, and get in touch with us um otherwise i guess we'll wrap it there right thank you for spending the time with us today we hope you have a great afternoon hope to see you next time thanks everyone take care